I'm so all right, everyone. Good morning. I had a I had a problem with the questionnaire because I'm writing a story where the characters are like 15 years old mm -hmm. and the questions do not relate to that age group. Okay. None of the questions could be answered for that age group? I'm saying the majority because, of the questions. Because for example, Leslie is doing middle grade, I believe, right, Leslie? And um and I think you were able to use some. But I also recommend if these questions don't apply to you, Google young adult novel character questionnaire, middle grade novel character questionnaire, Google the genre that you're looking for. And I'm pretty sure you're going to find a questionnaire that would help you um, with that. OK. Um, I'm going to Google it right here because. I also think that the questions can sort of prompt you to develop your own questions as you're developing characters. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you have to use them like verbatim, which is what I did. I sort of just used it as a guide because I'm writing a story about um, these three sisters um, from my childhood that came from the U.S. to DR and a whole lot that happened with that. And I just wanted to capture each one and how, how different they were. Um, and the questions don't necessarily apply to that, but it did help me um, in in sort of shaping and remembering their each each one of their characters. So. Um, also, folks, if you haven't used, um, let me see, let me share the screen. Am I sharing my chat GPT? So I asked it to help me create a character questionnaire for young adult. And it did that for me. So if I wanted, so it gave me 11 things to think about. So now I could say, let's draft, uh -huh. let's start with 25 questions. Hey, baby. To help me develop my character. Okay. Now, this is just a guide, but you know, you can, like I said, you use ChatGPT like you use Google and it will provide you with everything that you need. So there it is, 25 questions. If I want 25 more, I could just ask it, give me 25 more. Or I could say, do you have any suggestions? Do you have any opinions about this? And it will tell me again. Also, folks, um, I think in a previous workshop, I also suggested that you could go into ChatGPT and tell J Chat J GPT that it will be your writing coach. So if you're writing middle grade, if you're writing young adult, if you're writing a memoir, if you're writing poetry, you could tell it, you will be my young adult writing coach. Help me write this book. What questions do you have for me for us to get started? Right. You tell it who it's going to be It's going to act like it and it's going to walk you through the process. And during these conversations, you could always ask questions. If there's something that you don't understand that you needed to clarify, um, if you need examples of whatever it is that it's teaching you or whatnot, chat GPT is also going to do that. OK. So look at these questions. What is your character's biggest insecurity and triggers? How does your character express love and affection? What prejudice does your character hold and why? Also, the more context you give it, of course, the more helpful it will be. 
For example, um, Amina is mentioning that her character is 15 years old. Amina probably has a broader idea of who her character is and where that setting and plot is. And she could share that with ChatGPT and say, this is all the information I have for my character. Help me develop a character questionnaire so that I could further develop who this person is. And it's going to take the information that Amina is sharing and it's going to continue developing that character. Does that sound helpful to you all? Mm -hmm. I hope so. I know some of you may not be too um, familiarized with chat GPT and artificial intelligence. It's the future, folks. We got to get with it. Okay. <laughs> um, again, for, for those of you who have the free version, please go in the chat and answer these questions for folks. These are just questions. I'm not asking you to do anything out of the norm, Rihanna and Idanmi. So it should be fine. Um, the chat GPT um, has limits when, if you want to use, um, for example, the plugins. The plugins, I don't believe, are available for the free version. But then again, I don't have the free version anymore. So I'm not sure if they've upgraded the free version because the paid version has definitely gone up a level a few yeah. levels. Yeah. Um the paid version is insane. Um so but just to ask questions of the chat GPT, you should be able to do that just fine without a problem. Um if there's more that you want to do it again like using the plugins that they provide um then yeah also if you're not sure What's the difference between the two? YouTube folks, go on YouTube and say, what's the difference between the free version and paid version of ChatGPT? There's tons of videos. There's folks that I subscribe to that keep me updated on what's going on with ChatGPT. Besides a friend of mine who's also as obsessed as I am, and he's always texting me and telling me, hey, this is what's up. This is what's going on. You might look into this to run your business or whatever, because I you. The majority of conversations that I have on ChatGPT is for me to run DWA. Yeah. Um, it's brainstorming ideas that I have. It's, for example, I have to launch an Indiegogo in April, so I'm using it to help me draft the Indiegogo language. Um, you know, sometimes I have to email schools about contracts and stuff, and I just want it to sound a very specific way. I give it the context, and it'll draft the email to me. Right. Sometimes I won't know how to pitch our book box to somebody. And, you know, chat GPT already knows my business. It knows my book box. So it'll just tell me, hey, say this or say that. Or you might consider offering this. You might consider doing that. So it's tremendously helpful for me. Um, Rosenda, what do you mean to scroll up to the chat GPT page? What do you want to see? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's it. That's thank you. All the questions, because I could just put this in a Google Doc and send it to you all. Um, but this is for. So the prompt that I gave it. Let me just start from the beginning, okay? So it doesn't need to be anything out of this world, guys. Okay. I just said I just went in there. I didn't say anything. Let's create a character questionnaire for a young adult novel. That's all I said. Okay. And it says, because I trained my chat GPT to respect me. So re it replies, of course, Angie. <laughs> so it tells me, absolutely, Angie. It must be polite. <laughs> yes, it's very polite. Crafting a character questionnaire for a young adult novel is a fantastic way to develop well-rounded, engaging characters. Here's a comprehensive questionnaire that can help authors explore various aspects of their characters, making them more relatable and authentic to young adult readers. And it just gave me a list of things that I should consider. You know, these are just lists, right? But things that I should think about when I'm developing my, my character, right? But I want questions. So I said, let's draft 25 questions to help me develop, develop my character. And it says, certainly, 25 thought-provoking questions designed to help you delve deep into your character's development for your young adult novel. These questions will explore various facets of your character's life and personality, aiding in creating a rich and multidimensional 
figure. And here are the 25 questions. And again, like I mentioned before, if I want more questions, then I would just tell it, give me more questions. Are we good, Rosendo? We Gucci, Rosendo? Okay. <laughs> Perfecto, yeah, Gucci, okay. we Gucci. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so um, Rihanna, you're asking about poetry writing, right? What about poetry do you need help with? Is it the mm -hmm. rhythm? Is it the rhyme? Is it... Yeah, I mean, I was just curious, like, what kind of questions you would ask, because it's like, you know how you're asking these questions to develop your character, like, you wouldn't necessarily do that with poetry, so, yeah, I mean, mostly what I usually need help with is rhyming, mm -hmm. so I guess, like, you know, like, how would you usually phrase these questions, um, I don't know, I'm just curious, like, how this could be used for poetry, because I would love to use it. Yeah, I well, just, for yeah. poetry, I would simply go in there and say, hey, I'm writing a poem, I need your help. And it will probably say, okay, Rihanna, what 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 are you working on? What do you need help with? Okay. And you could just go in there and say, I need help with my rhyming. And you could on the paid version, for example, it has a clip here in the conversation where I could just upload any file and the chat GPT will read it. And you could say, read this file please give me your opinion suggestions on structure suggestion on grammar um do i need to make any corrections you know let me know how i can improve this poem as simple as that as you would just ask anyone um okay thank you any type of question that you will have because i i believe in also in our previous workshop i went in there on how you could use chat gpt to feed it your manuscript and ask it to correct the grammar and, you know, a bunch of other things you might have um, questions about on your manuscript. And you could do that step by step. So you could train and say, hey, you're going to be my poetry coach. And you could train it to, to you know, what type of poetry, right? Um, is there a poet that you love that you want it to be like? Or or that you want your poetry to kind of like, well, you never want your poetry to be exactly like somebody else's. You want yours to stand out, but you could definitely ask the chat GPT to, you know, give it some characteristics of a poet that you love. Right. Yeah, thank you. That's helpful. Right. Um, who else? So Amina, um, ChatGPT is the website. I'm going to put it in the chat. And you can also Google it, guys. Um, Google, you know, openai.com. Okay, this is the website. And you could create a free account. I'm pretty sure when you go about to log in, it'll probably tell you what the difference between the paid version and the free version is. You could try out the paid, the free version for as long as you want um, and then move on to the paid version. Um, but it's a wonderful, wonderful asset and tool. Um, does anyone have any more questions about this? I have a comment in a prior workshop. Uh, yet someone mentioned chat, chat GPT, and mm -hmm. I've used it for Gloria Licious. Now I know I could. Now I you just learned I could use it for poetry, which is interesting. You could use it for anything, guys. You could use it for your personal life. If you if you're exercising, if you want to eat healthy, if you're learning how to play the piano, if you're learning how to code, anything. Just ask it. Just go on there and pose your question in the same manner that you would go on a Google browser. All right? Just try it. Doesn't hurt. Once you try it, you'll be like, holy crap. <laughs> it makes it easier. It does when trying to market. Separate. Yeah, especially when you're trying to, you know, sometimes we have 
a, a, a block. We have an idea of something we want to do, but we don't know how to exactly go about doing it. And then you could just go in there and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, but I have no clue how to go about it. Do you have, any, let's brainstorm my options. I do that all the time. Let's brainstorm my options. And, you know, recently it has really helped me because now with our book box, I'm trying to implement some new things. And I'm like, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? You know, um, so it, it's helped me get like new school contracts that now are requesting the book box. And I'm like, great, because that's that's what I wanted. The schools to buy the book box. So now they're they're buying it in bulk. Good. Let's stick with that. Now we just need to improve that. Nice. Right. Um, so, yes, everyone, this is um, this is a wonderful tool. So going back to my first question, nobody finished the character questionnaire. I'm clear. OK, I didn't finish I it, it because my mother's eight years old. I kind of use the questions that you developed with the, the that you showed us. Got it. Okay. Well, now you know, right? If those questions didn't help you, now you could go back, go on chat GPT, tell it who you give it some sense of who your character is and create questions that will fit that character. And go from there, right, Gloria? You're gonna tell it. My mom, eight years old, you know. So you many because you may not have you didn't know your mom at eight. So how do you go back to eight year old mommy through her story? Yeah, exactly through her stories. I know she had scarlet fever. She lost her hearing. You know, stayed home. All these traumatic. Look at that. So you may want to. Was she in Mexico when she got um and and where was she when she got scarlet fever? I I think she was in New Mexico. See. My family's history from New Mexico on my mom's side, it goes back to the 1800s, but they lost their farm that, through eminent domain. She lost, she lost her hearing, scar scarlet fever. I mean, it just said this whole wow. saga. So you see, it would be interesting to see what was going on in that area during yeah. that time. Was scarlet fever something common? Yeah. How was it being treated? You know, there's so many things that you could include in your story like historical facts that you may have to do even more research and you could have chat gpt do that research for you yeah yeah i'm thinking i think it's going to be bigger than i even thought but it feels like i'm ready to do it um just just do it like nike um let me see rosendo says that his answers are still a work in progress that's fine as long as you're working on it um, Susana said, could you send me the handouts from last week? Um, Leslie, could you share? Um, Susana, you weren't on my email, right? I don't, I don't think so. Okay, hold on. Let me look for that email. Um, send, put your email in the chat, Susana, and I'll okay. send it to you right now. Um, yeah, Leslie, in my email, um, I have your, your Google doc, but I'm also sending her everything else. I sent everyone like the videos, um, the read C article for folks, um, and other stuff. Let's see. So Sindo says, so you're saying I don't need to use my body double technique any any longer, just use ChatGPT. <laughs> um, Alex, Alex, give me your email and I'll forward. There you go. Um, forward. So in this email, you will always also see week one and week two videos, okay? For those of you who missed it. Alguien más. Nadie más. Gloria. Gloria. 
Okay, I sent it to all of you right now. Okay. And Eileen needs it too. Gemma, anyone else? Okay. All right, folks. So, um, did any of you read the Read C article? Nah. Yay. Yes. I have time for that. I ain't got I ain't got time for that. What? Who read it? Anyone want to share what they learned? Simone, Stacy. Simone, you read the article. You want to share what you learned? If you remember. Oh my God. Hold on a second. I was making breakfast and I forgot my stove was on. Thank God for electric stoves. Not I would have burnt down the apartment a long time ago. Um. Oh, I can't do an electric stove. <laughs> mm -mm. I um. My, I have my fire. <laughs> it takes the. Uh, it takes some getting used to, Gloria. Um, I had one in my in my old townhouse, and uh, el arroz no sale no sale igual. So. Oh, uh, my mm -hmm. rice comes out pretty good. El con con no sale igual. Yeah, my rice, <laughs> con con sale. Uh, At some point, you figured it out. Like my... Yeah, like I said, it takes some getting used mm -hmm, to. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen right away. Okay, so where was I? Um, the Read C article. Um, the Read C article. Yes. Who wants to share? I'm going to die at Um, this was the article about the setting, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I did read it. I read most of it, but I liked it because I sometimes I don't really pay too much attention to the setting. It's kind of like what's convenient. But the reading about that, I'm like, you know, I like how they were saying that the setting can be like it's a character in of itself. And I've read a lot of books and stories where the setting really has its own personality. So that's something that I would like to try to incorporate in my writing. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Who's next? You know, I, I'm thank you for re reminding us what it was about, reminding me of what it was about, because when we read that last week, I immediately thought of my grandmother's kitchen in the Fresno Valley and how they used to sit in the kitchen eating tortillas and chili. So that what became a character in itself that but then led me to think about you writing about my mom. Nice. Good. Even I, like it, think it of it like a, as, a, as a reader, as a reader, right? If like the writer doesn't take you to, you know, the place that they're talking about, oftentimes the way that I read, I have to like close my eyes and try to make up my own sort of world. But if you already like engage, like like the article is saying, it's just sort of, you know, geographically or by use of the senses, you make it a character. It just takes the story to a different level. Like it's. It, it definitely for me at least it sort of makes or breaks it even if the person like the people characters are rich the setting has to be part of it too right um let's start i just shared this article by Jer by the jericho website um pacing in your writing let's take five minutes to read that folks um and we'll come back and talk about it because this is what the workshop is about today, okay? 
Um, the link is in the chat. Lillian, good morning. I, I sent you a link to an article we're reading right now. So if you could take time to read that and we're going to be talking about it in a few minutes, okay?
Okay. <laughs> Did everyone get through the article? It's long. But does anyone want to share what they've learned so far? What do you think about the article? I think it's pretty spot on on what pacing is. It reminds me a lot of like, um, like for instance, uh, uh, I don't know if anybody knows Dan Brown. He's the guy that wrote the Da Vinci Code. And I, love I read a novel, a novel of his, uh, Angels and Demons. Mm -hmm. The book is almost 700 pages and it, everything happens in one day and yeah. you cannot put that book down. It's yeah. like you, you can't breathe and you need to know and you need to know and you need to know and you need to know. Um, and that's like, that came to mind um, reading the article. Great like that. example, Jahaira. Great example. So I think Dan Brown books are like thrillers, like mystery thrillers, something like that, right? Yeah, he writes mostly like thrillers, uh, tech uh, thrillers that usually incorporate some sort of government or yeah you know um no, I was trying to figure out what was the subterfuge yeah. where he's categorized as um yeah I would say that it's a thr it's like thrillers because thrillers um are fast paced mm -hmm. <laughs> um Susana you wanted to share something one thing I liked about the article is it talks about different ways to get there like like it it, it it's because everybody's different in, in terms of their process um because when i was first reading it i was thinking about i ha i would i have a hard time firmly creating a plot i'm more of like start it out get the idea and and go with it so i like the fact that it gives you different options um to to develop plot yes yes who else um simone said that pacing in her play should be the same as pacing when you perform poetry. Yes. Yeah. So um, Simone has a, a very set um, intention with her play. Um, Leslie shared that The Purple Hibiscus by Chamanda Naga, I can never pronounce that name, has a great pacing as well. Is that, what is that book about, Leslie? You're muted. It's about, it takes place in, in Nigeria and it's about like a father and a family. It's so funny because it was such a great book, but I don't remember all the little details. Um, it's she's, a middle grade, young adult. No, no, no. It's a, it's a, it's an, it's an adult book. Okay. Yeah. I, love, I love Nigerian writers and um, they're just, I don't know. Their, their writing is. I just bought one um the other day. She's I know she's Nigerian, but she is from I could put African this in there. Um I'll look it up, but thank yeah. you. She's a little controversial right now though. Um, because she okay. you know, JK Rowland says something about trans yeah. people and then she said trans women are trans women, which is transphobic. It's a whole big thing. And then she wrote a letter um about some Nigerian and other West African writers in her writing group. She sort of like outed them in her in her website. What Chimanda did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wrote a whole big letter. Oh it God. would be like it would be like if something happened and it's just it, it's kind of like us, right? Like it's like her group is like us. And so basically she has a writing group in Nigeria and up and coming writers go to it. And it's very like, um, it's, a, it's a little bit exclusive. And I guess the writers in her group were very upset that she said trans women are trans women because some of them are also trans and out and, and also like basically canceled her publicly. And they were, some of them were her friends. And so Shimamanda felt very like hurt and it's the whole thing, but she basically wrote a letter about them. Didn't put their names, but basically wrote all the emails that she they have wrote her in the in a letter and on her website. And and it's just it was it it just became this thing. So she's a all little right. So this is why. What is it? What is it? What they what they say about your your favorite authors? <laughs> There's a saying that goes. Um... Hi, Samarita. You don't want to meet your faves, something like that. Like just, <laughs> oh my God. 
a date. That's horrible. It's like just right. Definitely don't try to meet your heroes. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, when you try to meet your heroes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's that's horrible. So, so she just basically outed people and threw them under the bus. Um, all righty, Leslie. Thank you for the chase, man. Um, Lemon hasn't disappointed you yet, Simone. <laughs> you just got to dig a little deeper. If you dig, you will find. Um, yeah, definitely, Amina. I agree. Definitely, some opinions should be kept to ourselves. People, I don't know. Um, well, yeah, people, people okay. get a platform and they feel like they have to share everything. Anyone else wants to um share their thoughts on this article? Gloria. I would just support what um Susanna said. I liked how it said to use the different techniques to affect the pacing, you know, shorter sentences or longer sentences. Uh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Um I I resonated with it because I, I read a lot of romance and sometimes I get pissed off because it's going too slow and I'm like, when are we going to get to the good part? <laughs> oh my God. The slow burn, when the slow burn is yeah, too slow, I'm like, I can't. Okay, I'm like, like, okay, are they, can they do this already? Because this is pissing me off. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I have a few authors that I know that they're just going to go like, you know, they're not going to take that long. And then there's others that I'm like, Simone, not everything is Fifty Shades. I agree, not everything is Fifty Shades. I, the the romance I read is better than Fifty Shades because Fifty Shades is not very well read. Um, a lesbian author, Melissa Braden. You want a good romance? Read her book. Yeah, she put, is put a her, master. Put her name in the chat because yes. I'm I'm about to fill up my Kindle. Do um, that. I'm telling you, this she knows. Does what she's anyone doing. else have an example of something you're reading oh, that is great. slow paced or fast paced that now you think about it and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Masterclass in pacing, Stephen King, uh, eleven twenty two sixty three. This book, it's huge, but oh my god. Oh my, you read that? Oh my god, yeah. It took you a year? No, no, it took me like a a week. A week. This right here. I'm telling you, you want to stay on the edge of your seat and and just like keep getting your mind blown all the time. And then, and it's almost hey, like, so it's like some horror? sort of time traveling. Is that book? Not exactly. Not exactly. No, there is some elements. I mean, it's Stephen King, but this is more like a time traveling thing and somebody having like a portal to travel to a very specific place at a very okay. specific time over and over again. So like, once you go through the portal, you're in 1950s. You can stay there for as long as, as you want in that place in that time, be whoever you want to be. Change history, do all of these things. When you go back through the portal to present time, only two minutes have gone by. But oh. you can see how you've altered history. So the people in, in present world have also aged and have also, it's, it's insane. Like it's, I, used to, I used to read so much Stephen King and Dan Brown. I, I need to go back to my fave. This right here. This, this, guy, this guy was supposed to go and stop the assassination of John F. Kennedy. So oh. that's what it was. And I'm telling you, do yourself a favor, even if it takes you two years to read it, but it's really, really, really. Wow. Yeah. How many pages is that book? This is um, 800 something, 849 pages. See, I if I buy that book, I'll be anxious because I'm just like, oh my God, I'm only then, five. Then get it on your Kindle. Get it on your Kindle. But when and I that way it won't intimidate you. Yeah, I don't pay attention to like the page numbers. And sometimes I read a book in two days and I'm like, oh, I write 400 pages. All yes. Right. So okay. if you do it on your Kindle, it's not as intimidating. Bueno, folks, we have a reading journal for you to keep track of your reading. Okay, it's on our website. Um, and, you know, it has a bunch of stuff. If you're reading series, you could log in what you're reading during the year. You could review the books. It also has a list of Dominican books that I want you all to start reading if you haven't read. It has a calendar. So, you know. It has a, you know, if you're doing audio books, it also tracks audio books, books you lent out that you forget, library books, 
all of that. So I just designed this. It's up on the website. You can order it. Um, I started using it. Um, but yeah, for those of you who are avid readers, because I realize I need one, but I need very specific things. So this is our reading journal for all you readers out there. Okay. Um, if you go to the shop on dominicanwriters.com and you look up El Diablo, I always forget this. Just go to the shop, look up <laughs> um, DWA exclusive products. There you go. And you'll find our new merch one, two. I've added like five things to the website this week um, that you could um, enjoy or gift to people along with our notebooks and mugs and whatever the case. But anyway, so, okay. So I wasn't able to finish the entire article, but, um, oh my God, where's this website? Oh, Dios mío, pero, okay, I have so many things open here. Okay, um, I wasn't able to finish the article, but I did share the website with ChatGPT and I said, read this article and give me the key points. Um, and it said, the key points from pacing and writing article and Jericho writers in include, one, understanding pacing as a crucial element in storytelling that affects how readers engage with their narrative. Two, the need for a balance between fast and slow pacing to build tension, develop characters, and keep readers interested. Three, Techniques for adjusting pacing, including varying sentences, lengths, change narrative direction, and using cliffhangers. The importance of considering pacing in different parts of your story to maintain a good flow and engage readers throughout. Um, and then it says, for a detailed exploration of these points, you can refer to the article here. And it gave me the link. But um, yeah, see, I didn't need to read that whole article. I read most of it, but all I did was share the link with um, ChatGPT and say, summarize this for me, please. I want to know what this is about. So, um, Rosendo mentioned Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. What about that um, book, um, Rosendo? Is it slow pace? Is it fast pace? Uh, it's oh, it, it, it's slow pace. It's definitely slow pace because it goes over his whole. I mean, it tells you how Majiba started. You know, pre litigation, pre lawyer. You know, pre boxing, all the way to being released from prison. So this book, the edition I have, um, it's an Abacus Press. What edition is this? I doubt it's the first edition. So you know, uh, coming up when I came up, where I came up, you know, you know, Brooklyn in the nineties. You know, what I'm saying like. It, it, there was in New York a lot of um, influence from, um, what do you call it, apartheid. And, you know, you had, you know, Public Enemy, Malcolm X movie came out by Spike Lee and, you know, a lot of this and this. this. So, you know, when this book came out, um, you know, I read it as an adult, but, you know, those things happened when I was younger. When this book came out, th th this spanned his whole life, literally, before meeting Winnie and he was a child and Joe Berg and all, all that. So, you know, wow. it, it, it talks about, you know, what he went through uh, with his own people, let alone with the Dutch and, you know, colonialism. So yeah, it's a, it's a slow pace. It's definitely yeah, a slow pace. So, I can, let me, let me, let me show you. Let me just, I, well, would be, let, me, let me see, how many pages is this thing, man? This thing, it, it even has like a, 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 a table of contents and a glossary because of some of the words that are like in a different language that, um, that what do you call that language in um South Africa, what do you call it? Um, this book is 751 pages and I'm that's not included. Yeah, that's not even included. My my pages are like, you know how your pages get like so old, like the paper so old, like it gets like this the pia tan. Like this is how old this book. Matter of fact, let me show you. Now I ain't gonna I ain't gonna bore you. Probably yeah, that, it, that 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 yellow. Ooh, yeah, I yeah, love I love that. I love it. I love it's it. It's so I crispy. Love it. I love it. Because when I start to use it longer, <laughs> it's like that, it crisp it that, crisp up and the pages start breaking. Like it looks like some old knows scroll. She made it when her books get that that yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need it. Yeah, that virus. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, know, I know you know what I, I know you know what I'm saying, Jay. Yeah, I oh, did you read that book in a week? That's that's you're not a bookworm. You're you're a book beast. That's that's definitely crazy. That Bam. that Nelson Mandela book. Bam. The Nelson Mandela book took me. Not the Nelson Mandela book took me like a minute, and that was like a, a luxury, like a you know uh, uh, just a pastime read. But you know, outside of school, you know, I was like, man, let me pick this book up because you know it means a lot. You know, that person means a lot to me. So. 
But yeah, it was a slow, slow pace. Slow pace. Thank you for sharing, Rosendo. Um, no Diana is sharing that the love songs of W. E. B. Du Bois is an insanely large book and can be slow paced at times, but so worth the read. Wow. Okay, guys, we should have like a a a writer salon um book list that you all recommend and that you love. Be careful, um, be careful what you say, Angie, because I'll put like 10 books right now on that list. Don't don't test me. No, nah, I'm telling you, like I can do that right now. Oh, and I'll just add a link to our Amazon or bookshop so people could go on there and say, this is a writer salon recommendations for you to read. And, you know. Um, you turn into I'm an actually, influence. I'm Angie. actually going to plug my friend's <laughs> book at the end of this because you it's it's a book of poetry it's in spanish he's nicaraguan he's a he's he's a painter he's an artist and this is his first book and it's amazing he's working on something else Don't, um, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yo, 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 yo yo leslie what's that in your hands you flipping what's that book leslie you flipping in your hands i see that now nah, go ahead no go she was waiting go ahead step up step up <laughs> uh what's the title <laughs> the man who collected clouds <laughs> Yeah, uh, you guys are so funny. Um, this is by Ingrid Rojas Contreras. It's oh, so she's really good. I can't believe they let her write this book. It's like the grandfather could move clouds. She got amnesia. Her mother got amnesia at the same age or something weird. It's just like amazing. I couldn't. I couldn't put the book down. And I even met her in person, and um, and I was just so scared of her, but so like, so. <laughs> So happy to meet her. You were scared but, of her. Huh? No, you but were, you know how it is like you when you meet someone, you're like, I'm in, uh, kind of like an, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Como, like, me, me asuste, yo no sé. I, I just kind of like, oh hi. And like she wrote my little so name in. It there. was also translated to Spanish, I see. Oh, I guess. I didn't know that. But it's so good. I yeah, I, I like, downloaded a sample to my Kindle right now. Okay. And it's um the pacing is good. There's some so slow parts, but it's just like the questions about how her grandfather could do that, and just about culanderos and all that stuff. It's just really great. Nice. I think this is everyone. Everyone here will love it. Okay, see, I'm gonna That's have dope. to have all of y'all put it in the chat. <laughs> Your book recommendations. Don't send it straight to me. Just put it in the chat. Because we mentioned a lot of books here, and then I'm like forgetting. Jahaira mentioned a couple. I added the Stephen King book to my to my Kindle. So let's let's share those book titles, guys. Okay. Um, Susana also mentioned Olga dies dreaming. Yes, Susana. She does some interesting things with pacing and layering. You're right. Yeah, totally agree. That's on my TBR as well. Um, her first chapter is slow, but she builds the stake quickly. Then once she get um got her nails into me, I had to read the remainder nonstop. Um, Karib said it's such a good book, and when it picks up the space, it really picks up. Yes, to all of y'all reading Latino books, I love it. Let um, me find out you are uh, you a book influencer now, Angie. Oh, you been there. My bad. My bad. I see look at your face. My bad. My apologies. I disrespected you. I disrespected you bad. I see that. Yeah, you you definitely yo, you 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 definitely from the Bronx. Yo, you definitely from the Bronx. My bad, my bad. I apologize. Let me shut up. I'm mute mute myself for the rest of the show. Mute myself for the rest of the show. Rosendo. I'm gonna mute you, Rosendo. No, I'm gonna do it myself. It's good. I got you. I got you. you. (laughs) Now don't don't be careful. Don't spit up the coffee. Don't spit up that uh, cafe bustelo, because that shit is expensive. My café is a domingo, yes. Oh, that's, oh, that's not the domingo? Oh, you traitor. Okay, all right, all right. I'm muting <laughs> mute myself now. Three, two, one, bye. Oh, my God. Um, Speaking of, I have to record, like, a whole video of, like, book mail and whatnot. Um, But, yeah, if you don't know, we have a book club. <laughs> um, Two book clubs. And I'm always out there on social media promoting our Dominican books, but I'm also going to start talking about the Latinx books that I read because there are um, so many great ones. And I want people to also, you know, outside of reading Dominican books, also expand their their bookshelves, <laughs> so to speak. Um, um Thank you for all of you. <laughs> Lillian is also here cracking up. You guys are just hilarious. Um, it's 12 o'clock. Okay. Mano a la <laughs> Um, 
We've been having too much fun here this morning. Okay, folks. So um, week three, plotting and creating a strong narrative structure, right? So I think also in the chat, I shared a couple of articles um, before the Jericho one. If anyone could grab those and reshare again, because one of them was on, um, on, on narrative, right? So... Um, Please let me know if you are able to see my video, the presentation, right? So yeah. we're going, if you all remember, this is just a summary of what we discussed. I believe it was in workshop one where we mentioned um, how do you create your crafting your plot, right? So we mentioned your introduction. Um, these are the five five elements that your story should include, which is the intro, um, setting the stage of your story, introducing your characters, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the resolution, okay? Because at the end, every story, fiction at least, and maybe not, you know, not every conflict needs to be resolved, but I guess you reach a compromise or you reach a, a moment where you you're like okay this is this is gonna be what it is um in a way right like a sense of completion a sense of reflection um to you know to end your story so as you know the introduction is setting the stage the purpose is you're setting the scene introducing the main characters and presents the initial um situation or conflict. And for you to ask yourself, how does the intro draw my readers in, right? These are questions that you should be asking yourself when you're writing the introduction. There's some intro, let me, let me see. I, I watch a lot of K-drama on Netflix and I'm watching one right now. Um, and the first episode, I was just like, what the hell am I looking at? Um, but it started right off of the drama. I and love key drama. <laughs> it, it started definitely. Oh my God, me too. too. And I was like, but what's the backstory? What's going on here? <laughs> right? It started with this, uh, it's a the, the girl walks into her boyfriend's um office. He's sitting there in the lobby. Um, I guess it's the cafeteria sitting there talking to another girl. And his girlfriend walks in with like a Gucci bag and you think that she just went shopping, but no, she sits across from him, takes out this large Tupperware full of Korean food that her mom cooked. And then she takes it out of the bag. This is when you realize she didn't go shopping. She took the Tupperware out of the bag and it's just like this huge thing. She takes it out and then she walks over to her boyfriend and she spills it over his head. And the girl that's sitting across from him is like, what the hell is going on? And his girlfriend is like, you might want to step away. And, you know, the guy is like, what is wrong with you? You know, what are you doing? And she's like, well, um, let's have a conversation. Maybe you want this. Maybe you want to think about how people are looking at you. Do you want people to just say you did me wrong and I'm just pissed off? Or I'm just a crazy girlfriend. Or should I just reveal that you cheated on me? And he stood shut because he was like, I don't want you to embarrass me and say you cheated on me because in Korea, cheating is like, it should be like that everywhere. But in Korea, it's like, you are like almost socially canceled if you cheat on somebody and it's like public knowledge. It's crazy. And the same applies to you getting a divorce. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're but, very... Um, but, um... But yeah, it started off with the drama and I was left like, oh, okay, but what, you know, what led up to this, right? But now I'm like way into the, the drama and I'm like, okay, got it. I, I see it informed me on why it was done that in that way, right? So then we have, um, which is, again, your choice, whether you want to do slow pace introduction, slow pace everything for your story, or if you want to immediately, sorry, immerse your reader in, in an action, 
and something going on? Do you want to grab their attention immediately so that they're like, oh my God, what is this? Or do you just want to draw them in slowly, right? Those books that draw you in slowly get on my freaking nerves because I'm just like, you're taking too long. Um, and now I need to mentally prepare to read the next chapter because you're going too slow and I just want to get to the good part. Um, and I think I struggle with 100 years of solitude because of that. Um, I can't get through that, got that book. Um, I gave up. But anyway, rising action, all right? Building the tension. This section develops the conflict and introduces complications, increasing tension and investment in the story. So think about what is the conflict in your story? What is the complication? Complication. What is the tension in your story? Right. Think about these things when you're creating your character. All right. The climax. The climax is the story's peak of tension and conflict, often leading to a major revelation or change. How does the climax alter the course of your story? Okay. The falling action is releasing tension. Um, this phase deals with the aftermath of the climax, beginning to resolve the story's conflicts and tensions. So for you to ask yourself, how do events follow the clim following the climax lead towards the resolution I desire, right? Number five is the resolution, or also known as denouement, trying, tying up loose ends. The resolution provides closer resolving closure, resolving any remaining conflicts and clarifying the character situations. For you to ask yourself, how does the resolution provide a satisfying end to the story? And many folks have a hard time ending a story. And, and just, how do you say it? Stopping, like that, ya, ya, no escriba ma, like that's it, it's, the book is done, right? People have a lot of difficulty reaching that point um, for them to just walk away from the story because it has no more for you to add. Um, that's why getting a writing coach sometimes is really good because they're going to stop doing your tracks and be like, stop, that's it, it's good. Um, okay, so. Um, so applying this structure to your own stories, um, I think we did this before, sketching a basic outline of your story, keeping the classic plot structure in mind, focus on how the narrative progresses from the beginning to end. I'm just going to share this Google Doc with you all, um, because it gives you sort of like, where's my chat? It guides you with questions for the plot on things that you should be asking yourself while you're writing it. Okay. Let me know if you all have access to this. Um, oh, does it share? Um, anyone with a link can view. Okay. <laughs> Refresh. Oh. Okay, stop. Thank you. And post office so. Yep, got it. So violent. Not for my door. Um, okay, do you all have access to the It's books I ordered because, you know, why am I still ordering more books? <laughs> oh, God. Let me put this over here. It's not hoarding if it's books. <laughs> <laughs> um, déjame ver. So you all have access to the plot? Yeah, I see you all in here. Okay, good. All right. Um, so I just summarized the steps in here. You could take five minutes on your own time to do all that. We're not going to do that today. I think um, we had good examples of what that was. 
So pacing is about speed at which your story unfolds is crucial in maintaining suspense, developing characters, and keeping the reader engaged. Okay, so mastering pacing in your writing. Applying pacing to your narrative involves varying sentence structure, paragraph length, and a level of detail. So as a writing exercise for the next 12, 10, 10 minutes, okay, Choose a scene from the outline that you guys did. I believe it was in number one in workshop week one. Do you all have access to your outline? Do you remember that? Okay. Choose a scene from your outline. Okay. Write it twice, once in a quick pace and once in a slow pace. Okay, do you all remember for those of you? If not, um, you could definitely start a, um, let me see, let me go back. Where's week one? In week one, we spoke about, you know, ideation and conceptualization. Um, You could also create an outline on ChatGPT. Okay. Just give it context of your story. And, but again, if you don't have your outline, just think of a scene that you will want to include in your story. That is the definite that you're including in your story. Write one fast pace and write one slow pace. So the slow pace is probably going to be the boring one. And the fast pace is going to be the um, the one that's going to grab your reader. So try that out. Five minutes.
I forgot to put a timer. I think we started at 1210, right? So we're good. Um, so does anyone want to share this, their slow pace versus fast pace? Dun, 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 dun. Yes, no, maybe. I don't feel like it. Angie, hi, this is Leela. Hi, Leela. Um, I can share it. I, I, if it, other folks have something that they'd like to share more specific. You are the part. first one who volunteered, Leela. Yeah, I don't have a slow versus fast. I, I haven't gotten there yet, but I did write a scene or, and that I, that I wanted to just kind of share. I think I'm just kind of thinking about, um, I'm still really chewing on this, like pacing I can share it if it's helpful. Um, go, go ahead. So, okay. um, Rosendo, while Lila is sharing, the question was, does anyone want to share their slow pace versus fast pace? Because that's what I gave you all five minutes to work on. Um, so, Lila, go ahead. Okay. Um, the river swelled and pushed, swelled and pushed up against the levee walls, stubborn. The river swelled and grew, spilling over stubborn levee walls. The land saturated with lament, sacked and sank, and the water began to rise. The river rolled downhill and down the streets, knocking trees with a steady force, a flood of memories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess... That was so beautiful, nice and slow. I don't know. I think I would probably enjoy it more if you're reading it rather than me reading it in my own voice and I'm just like trying to rush through it. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I'm just like thinking about, like I guess what this exercise is making me think about is like at what points, like do things feel like they take forever, but there's so much that's happening that it gets to a point of saturation. Right. And then like what you're seeing, like what you're experiencing might be a flood of things that have been backlogging for a really long time. And so I'm just kind of like really sitting with those reflections and how that is reflected in the writing. All to say, like, I'm really grateful for all of the resources and the information you're sharing. It's really making me go deeper. Nice. Love it. Rosendo, you want to share? You could unmute yourself, Rosendo. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. She's not mad at you. <laughs> Who's or? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, this is um I, I rewrote the um, the week one uh piece about mm -hmm. the one I did. So I um as far as like a slow, slow pace. <clears throat> uh this is um the the I guess do I need to preface this or do you want me to just read it? You uh, can go ahead. Right, you want me to uh, so it's just um again, uh this is um week one, you were talking about doing it from um uh, like you gave two choices. Um, one of the choices we're doing from experience and uh, excuse me, writing from experience. And so this is the writing from experience from the um, that same thing I wrote from week one. <clears throat> uh, waking up in his sister's lap. He <laughs> waking up from his sister's lap. You know, he he smelt his own flatulence. He was in the church in the pew. The pew was wood and made his butt hurt. And he woke up. He woke up to more crying, but his eyes were still wet. His te his cheeks were still moist. The tears were still fresh. He hadn't been asleep for long, but he knew that he was still in the middle of a funeral, first and hopefully his last. The crying became wails and the wails became sorrowful. But then as he heard the chains from behind, he looked up, his three-year-old body peering over the back of the pews. He looked up again and then he saw his Theo Julio. Theo Julio coming up the red carpeted aisle through the pews to the coffin Side by side on him was two correctional officers, chain wrist to wrist, chain ankle to ankle, shuffling back and shuffling forth slowly with an orange jumpsuit on. He didn't know why he had those colors on. He didn't know why he had those chains on, but he knew he hadn't seen him in a while. And he knew he hadn't seen tears coming from his uncle's face in so long. After that, the wails became overwhelming. And then he couldn't even look at the body. He couldn't even look at his sister. He couldn't look at his uncle. All he could do was put his hands in his, put his face in his hands and cry. 
himself, not knowing why or how or when he'd stop, but he knew it was something he couldn't he couldn't deal with again. After that point, after that, after, excuse me, after that point, he knew this is something that would something that would change his life forever. He knew he would die one day. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Wow, that is bad. Yeah, but, is that, okay, sorry, I didn't. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's I okay. Know. But um, so yeah, yeah, I know. But, so that would yeah. be slow pace. I yeah, know. yeah. Yeah, that's slow pace. Yeah, sorry, didn't mean to bring it down, but yeah, that's slow pace. I know, it's okay. Yeah. Um, anyone else wants to share? Thank you for sharing, Rosendo. No, no problem. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I think I, I just did, uh, I guess, uh, part of it, but um, so it's a bit personal, so just bear with me. It's a, sort of a vulnerable topic for me, but um. Uh, I'll start with the flow, and then I was working on the more fast-paced one. It's sort of um, more impactful, but you'll get the gist. Um, <clears throat> it was the first uh, the first phone call in June that said alarm bells um, all over me. I heard the change in his tone. It wasn't the slow, deliberate baritone I was used to or the dry humor my son inherited from me. This was harsh rapid fire f bombs that told me my boy was trapped in his psyche so that's the slower um paced one um and the faster paced one um starts off with dialogue it's like ma you're a fucking bitch he said son what's the matter what are you talking about i'm coming to jersey and i'm blowing you all away i'm tired of this bullshit i hung up and i tried to get in touch with his unit I knew my kid was in trouble, and so were we. That's it. I like the second part. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. That's, that that's what you're into. <laughs> I'm like, is, there the, is there a Dominican mom there that would be like, Mira. yeah, my, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, working on it. <laughs> Yeah, both were good. And again, it's just a matter of preference, right? Because some people love slow pace for certain um, things that they read, and then they prefer um, fast pace for other ones. So thank you for sharing that, Jahaira. Anyone else got anything to share? Um, I could read something. Go um, ahead. Okay. That. Susana? This is that. Yeah, Susana. I am. Uh... Um, I don't know if you're on camera, but it looks like you're frozen. Say again? Okay. Your image was frozen, I believe. Oh, oh okay. Let me get rid of this other Oh, thing. is that you have your your picture in the profile? Yes. Right? So I'm like, espérate, ya se frizó. <laughs> Let me get rid of that. It's I get it. I get, okay, go ahead. So I only have one version, but it, 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 it I thought I'd share it just because it's, it's I kind of decided to do like what Jay did in the in the second version, which I really, really love, just jumping right into the action. So this is something I was thinking about because I was thinking just to go right into, this is the opening. Um, okay. Uh, so much of summer was hijacked. Sorry. So much of summer was carjacked. I'm trying to get back into the driver's seat, chase out thieves that steal my sleep, flashbacks of kidnap and daggers. I want to leave these intruders by the side of the road, hightail away, watch a night sky on fire, and know a soft-toned dawn will appear. I want to sit in moonlight and to remember I am a daughter of goat-footed people, stitched with transcendent energies. That is to say, even as an earthling I have wings, cut from the ethereal amnion of life, which shouldn't be dragged through the mud. Our feet are made for that, can tolerate slosh between our toes. But our wings are something else beating gently to the rhythm of a heart, feathers lifting our weight just enough to remind us of oxygen's grace as we walk barefoot on a split rock road. No, don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. Ooh. Right? Like, <laughs> I love that. Wow. No, no, keep going. Please don't stop. <laughs> Re read my life to so, me, though. Susana, oh, that my that God. I must agree. El diablo. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, is yeah, that no, part no, of no. the, is is that that part of the pages you mentioned? Yeah, it's the opening. And I decided to just jump right into the action. 
and wow. um and I and I at, at first I was trying to it's the um like give it some setting and stuff and I thought you know what I'm gonna write about what this feels like and um and let let it reveal so I'm I'm up to about 15 pages right now I'm I'm super addicted to to writing this thing but I just wanted to see if it works to drag people in because like I well, didn't know if... you have your beta readers over here <laughs> you, you drew me in you drew us in you drew, okay. you drew the only yes. dude. You drew, me, you drew the one, the one dude in here. You drew him in. Yeah, you drew, you drew so, me in. Um, if you, you know, if you ever want to share those fifteen pages with us, and we'll give you, or you want to read it to us, we'll be open. Oh to my that. God, so please! I, I would love to. Being. Yes, I would love you know, to. You know, I thought I was done, and then I was looking at some different contests, and um, oh, there's one confusion. Uh, the, the the title is a Capricorn travels to the Tropic of Cancer. And, um, I'm a I Capricorn. Had... I'm already by. Are you? Love it. <laughs> Weepa, Weepa. I just had a birthday, so yeah. And I just realized I didn't establish that I'm a Capricorn. So I'm writing another scene right now um, about um, about Christmas week. And like, unless you're Jesus, like this is not a time to have a birthday. <laughs> right. And uh, so um, I'm I'm adding that. And I have to add another scene um, because I realized there's a few little gaps. But I would love to read it to people and, and get feedback. Oh. Put your, you know what, Susana, um, See? Collect, everyone put your email in the chat, Susana, collect them so that you could send it to us when you're ready. So okay. we're all signing up to be beta readers, right? Okay, yeah, careful, careful, said, careful what you wish for in the DWA. Matter of fact, Angie, <laughs> how you send flowers through this app? I need to send Susana some flowers right now. How do you do that? Please tell me. I don't know how to do that. I'm sure there's an auto automated AI. There's an automated, okay, there's an app for that? Yeah. There's an app for that? There's an emoji for that? There's definitely an emoji for flowers. But, um, folks, put your, um, make sure you're not sending it directly to me, but put it out. You could send it directly to Susana or you could just put it in the chat um, so Susana could take them down for when she's ready to share. Um, oh, Susana, you could also save the chat on your computer instead of you just writing everything down, okay? At the end of the, the end, it'll yeah. give me that. Oh, you, yeah. When everyone's done sharing, um, you could just save the chat. Okay. Thank you. Easier way than you um handwriting everything now. Okay, folks, we've reached the conclusion of our writing workshop today. We had too much fun. Um, oh, so before I forget, those of you who shared book titles, put them in the chat, please. I the other book covers. Yeah, I was you know tapping down and saying, "But I am over here like should I take a screenshot?" I was like, "No, I I shouldn't." <laughs> I know I missed some. I made a list. I made a list. Yeah, put a one on there. Oh, you made. Oh no! Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, I made a list. Yeah, Leslie, yeah. Leslie, so if you started, through. Leslie, if you started a Google Doc, I don't yeah, know if you started a Google Doc that everyone can contribute their books to. I think that would be easier. I, okay, I did. Okay, I could just. Post I think uh, according according to Robert's rules of parliamentary procedure, I make a motion to make Leslie Martinez our secretary. And so that she, I second that motion. I second. Ah, oh, third. You second that motion. Okay, that means we have a quorum because everyone here we have a quorum. So the that is uh, have it. official. <laughs> she, she's executive now. She's on the board. Wow. I, Thank you. I, okay, I don't ahead. know if Leslie got time for that, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. It's okay. She's been volunteered. It's fine. Yeah, I know it happens fast. Share, yeah. Um, Leslie, share the Google Doc with the book recommendations because I, I think it would be better for everyone to go in there. Oh, and, I just I just did. And OK, so folks, just go on there. Add your book recommendations because some of you share some really great stuff. Let me go in here. Um, I'm waiting for the that relit book. Um, I pre-ordered it. I see it's on. Um, there's a. Concha, ¿dónde está el libro? There's a Latino. Just go into your orders, Angie. I forget. Wow. Where are my orders? Because the book hasn't. There you go. Um, Relit 16 Latinx 
um, remixes of classic stories. That's coming out this has week. Any, has anybody read Las Madres yet? Yes, no, that's on my list. I bought so, it. I haven't um, read it yet. Leslie, we have to request access. I don't know if you want to open up the link to just us. I just did it. I just did it. I'm sorry. I just saw that. Yeah, my man. Um, Everybody has access now. Folks, put your name next. Oh, I don't have access. Put your name next to the recommendations. So I want to know who's recommending these books. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna put like like ten up there for you, uh, Angie and Leslie. Go so ahead, like, go ahead. Like check check them out, Jay and Susanna. You, you too, Simone. Check them out, Lily. Everybody. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm only out. on view. I can't edit it. I'm only on. Ay, view. Oh my god, Perate. Because who needs a social life when you have books? I'm attracted. Right. <laughs> I know. No, no, no. My social life revolves around my reading, and they're gonna have to get with it. This is what happens when I have a life. I lose my I lose my voice. My, my afternoon lost my voice. <laughs> you lose your oh, voice. You, 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 you be screaming at the book, Simone? You lose your voice, too. <laughs> 